When I first meet a horse and I start working on loading the horse into the trailer, a lot of issues that have to do with trailer loading come from groundwork issues. So I'm going to show you some of the groundwork training that I do with a horse because oftentimes when we get these horses that don't want to get in the trailer or they have some resistance, there are a lot of different ways that people will try. They'll try baiting the horse up into the trailer using grain. They'll try getting three or four friends and using a, a rope behind them or locking arms and trying to drag them on. And oftentimes this is happening at the worst places that it could happen, like at a show at 11 o'clock at night when you want to go home. So the method I want to show you is sending the horse onto the trailer, something that can be done with just you and the horse. It is much better for you and the horse if you do this groundwork stuff at home before you end up in the situation where you really need it. So since I've just met this horse DJ, I'm just going to do a few of the things that I would do. For example, introduce myself to the horse and some of my tools. So I'm just gonna walk up here and the big part of working with these horses is being able to read their body language. So as I'm watching this horse, I'm standing here and I'm looking at the whole horse and I'm thinking, does the horse look excited, nervous, focused on me? And this horse keeps looking around. So I'm watching the ears and the eyes and I notice that the horse is looking around. Doesn't seem extremely stressed. The horse is paying a little bit of attention to me. If, if I move around like that, you see that ear, this left ear, you see that left ear move. As I move backwards, that horse followed me. So the horse is staying aware of my body language. And then because this is going to be a tool that I'm going to use while I'm training the horse, I'm gonna make sure that the horse is okay with this. A lot of times people will tell me that their horses are afraid of whips or this tool is called a stick and string. And a lot of times the horses are fearful of that because these tools are only used to motivate the horse to move, which can a lot of times just look like smacking them. So we wanna make sure that these tools can also mean other things to the horses. So for example, I can scratch that horse. And again, we're reading the body language of the horse is going, who are you? That feels pretty good. And so we're watching, we're trying to learn to read this horse's body language. And so, we watched this horse loading earlier and we saw the body language where the horse was braced and leaning backwards. And so we wanna watch this. Even right now, I'm reading this horse's body language. I'm over here and I'm working. This horse is telling me it's very comfortable with me because it actually put its head down and moved over, which is a bit of disinterest actually. It's sort of a little bit like, hey, I'm comfortable with you, but I don't have to pay attention to you. These are just things that I'm noting about this horse horse doesn't seem unusually bothered by this. I, while I'm using this tool, it's a great place to reach up underneath near the sheath or the udders because if I don't know this horse, which I don't, I want to know if there's any ouchy spots. I'm going to do this on both sides of the horse. Again, we note that the horse is putting the head down, looking around, nothing that I would be stressed about, but again, it just shows me that this horse is actually fairly comfortable. If this horse were dancing around, or if this horse were trying to wheel around, and even if it was trying to stay facing me, it would show me a lot more nervousness. Or if this horse was just trying to walk away or completely blowing me off, or if the horse were swishing its tail and offended while I was doing some of these things. These are some of the signs you want to watch for when you're doing this. Okay. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna check in on a couple of the cues that I'm going to want to be able to use. And so one of those cues is going to be that I can send this horse forward and around me. So I have this horse on a 15 foot line, which is a nice comfortable length. I can get a little bit of distance, but not so much rope to have to handle. And so I'm gonna stand here and I'm going to use this hand to slightly drive the horse away and I'm gonna tap up here on the hip and ask that horse to move forward. You'll notice that the tapping stops when the horse moves forward. Again, we're watching the body language. The horse doesn't seem very disturbed by this because my goal is to be able to send this horse into the trailer. The problem with trying to lead a horse into the trailer, if the horse doesn't want to go into the trailer, is that 
you're not strong enough to pull a horse into the trailer. So what we want to be able to do is we want to figure out a way that we can apply pressure to the horse and so this pressure is going to be this tapping up here. I'm going to tap just a little bit more. Some of the options the horses have are to go forward. Now, if you notice, if you, even if you have to rewind it, notice that the horse did a little tiny head swirl. Depending on the angle, we'll see that again. But I, when I step on this gas pedal back here, when I ask the horse to go forward, the horse may go forward, the horse may kick out at me. Most horses that are going to kick out at me when I start to do this, now did you see just a little bit more of the tail, a little bit more of the, the head? So, but most horses that are going to be really kind of a violent reaction to this would actually show me that violent reaction or that resistance back when I was rubbing around the horse. I like that this horse backed up out of my space when I started to move forward. The reason this horse moved away from me is because the horse and I don't have a relationship. When you're doing groundwork with your horse, there are three main reasons to do groundwork. Number one, groundwork is a great place for me to learn to read this horse's body language. Number two, groundwork is a great place for this horse to learn to read my body language. So what we just saw there, when I'd been using this stick to ask the horse to go forward, when I then turned and walked towards the horse, the horse is going, hey, last thing you wanted me to do was move out of your space. So the horse naturally moved backwards a little bit. So these are the things that I'm noting. And the third reason that we do groundwork is for emotional control, which we're going to get to in just a moment. I'm going to check this out on the other side also. Asking this horse to move its head and neck away from me. Again, I don't know this horse, appears to have some nice training. I'm going to tap right here. You'll notice that that horse actually moved back into there. You'll notice that I didn't use a lot of pressure. The one thing I really like about a stick and string is that when I tap, I can tap myself even, and I can tap fairly hard, or I can tap very hard. And what you'll notice is different about this tool is that it's not going to have the sting that say a dressage whip would. If I were tapping like this with a dressage whip, if I increased to this much pressure, then it would actually have a sting or a bite where I can tap very firm like that and it just has more of a thud. You can try it at home with friends or family. And so when I'm tapping, the one thing you'll notice is that when I started tapping on this horse, the horse didn't feel threatened, but it actually moved its head back towards me and then it moved its head away. The reason I'm gonna make a note, so I'm gonna start tapping, and the horse moved away, I'm gonna release, but I'm gonna make a mental note of that because if the horse moves into my space a little bit, notice that ear flinching, see the ear flinch, there you go. That's how I know I'm doing enough. I don't need to use a lot more pressure if I have a sign of irritation. So as I start tapping, you'll notice that that ear, that left ear, is kind of flinching in rhythm, that's the horse saying it's having a reaction. Now what I'd like to be able to do is get the horse to move its front end off from a cue like that. And the reason I'm going to need that is because if I send the horse up, I don't want this horse to think running over me is an option. Because when they go up to the trailer, if I send them up, some of the most common things that they'll try to do are to go out around the right side of the trailer or run over me going to the left side of the trailer or run backwards. And the last one I want them to do is run me over. I would rather have them try to go around the trailer or go backwards, preferably going on the trailer, but I do not want me to be an option of being run over. I don't want that to be something the horse considers. So I want to double check this. So I'm going to tap a little bit more. Moving the front end is being able to move the head just a little bit. So I move the head just a little bit, and then I wait, and then I'm going to repeat. Tap, tap, tapping just the air, tapping. We notice the ear, we notice the head move, and that's enough of a reward. I can step into the space, tap again. This is this horse learning to read my body language. I'm going to talk about loading the horse into the trailer, and we're going to walk up to the trailer here, and I'm going to stand over here and we're going to call this nine o'clock. So I'm going to stand over here at nine o'clock and my goal is to send the horse up into the trailer which is going to be 12 o'clock. 
And so I'm going to read this horse's body language. I'm going to watch and see this horse sniffing the trailer, looking at me. I'm going to start to use some of those cues that I've brushed up on out here. So I noticed that I, I picked up my hand to ask that horse to move and the horse moved backwards. I'm going to reach up here. As you notice, I'm waving the stick and string. The first thing I notice is the horse looks off to the side. What I want to do is I want to teach this horse to move towards the trailer. I want to teach the horse that I'm going to apply pressure every time the horse is not focused on the trailer. So right now the focus left the trailer. I pick up the stick and string. If the focus goes onto the trailer, the horse is going to get a reward. Now the focus, if it comes back to me, would seem like it might be a good thing, but I don't want the horse focused on me. I want to be sending the horse into the trailer. You notice that one little step backwards. The purpose of my left hand is to keep the horse from coming into my space. So if I've done my 